Hello everyone. Again and again I welcome you all to, to join this uh, worship service in person and also for those who will watch this video clip wherever you are. But I welcome you all in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So as I begin my reflection sharing, I would like to introduce an interesting survey result about spirituality, spirituality in Australia 2020. So we may all agree that last year it was a challenging year for most of us. No matter what stage in life we live, what belief or faith we practice, or what values and virtues we own. It was, and even today, is still challenging us and our own being. So these figures from the survey could indicate us where we are going through in living and believing in Jesus Christ. The survey it was conducted by National Church Life Survey Research, NCLS, which is a research project taken place every five years since 1991. The research of NCLS studies about Australian spirituality, church health, leadership, and connection between church and community. I believe that we, Bronia Park Uniting Church, has joined this survey as part of Uniting Church in Australia out of 20 other Christian denominations. The survey titles 2020 Australian Spiritual Practices in a Year of Crisis. So this tell as its result that nearly seven in Australians affirm spiritual practices as important during crisis particularly including bushfires and the global COVID-19 pandemic. In the same survey, there is another question asking the participants about spiritual practices in 2020 versus 2019. Some 45% of Australians answered yes, and some 24% said it had been at the same rate as in 2019, whereas 15% of the those had increased their level of spiritual practices. Thankfully, some Australian Christians have been practicing their own spirituality during such a period of stress and crisis. In more detail, the survey studies about the participants' specific spiritual practices in 2020. Spending time outdoors, in nature, and listening to music were the two most popular spiritual practices that people might lift their spirit. In comparison to that, both church worship services, either in person or online, and small groups show a decrease whereas music, nature, prayer, and meditation show its increase. I totally agree with the result. That is what we have been at and how we have practiced our faith in God, our belief in spirituality, and our own way to follow words and deeds of Jesus Christ. So I have no doubt that we Christians have come seek God and His presence more and more. We have drawn more and more on whatever we practice, affirming and reaffirming our connection with God. God is God for us always. Jesus is Jesus always there for us waiting. And the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit always around us, among us, hovering for protection and care. The ways that we might seek to find them are changed, but we still need God and His great help in our daily life. 
I'm sure that you agree with me. In today's gospel reading, Jesus on the mountain is still Jesus the same for his disciples, Peter, James, and John, and for his all followers. Jesus keeps calling all disciples to join him. In this call to discipleship with Jesus' transfiguration, God shows himself exactly the same when he was with Moses and Elijah. On the mountain, Jesus with two great heroes represent the law and the prophets. Jesus Christ as he is, is viewed like a holy and sacred figure that his clothes become super white, talking with the heroes. But he does not attempt to bring those important heritages of the past Israelites' religion onto himself and in his ministry. Jesus, no matter what or how he looks like, is Jesus Christ for those disciples on the mountain and those followers who are waiting for him down the mountain. However, meanwhile, Peter misunderstands for the call. He misunderstands what it means to be with Jesus, who transfigures himself before them. He attempts to build three tabernacles as his ancestors attempted and box them in that framework of tradition and even shut off his occupation of God. Maybe, maybe Peter attempts to change the image of God from a humble and servant king to a victorious and glorious one like the emperor. So Peter is again challenged, this time by the divine voice itself. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. There are only three disciples with Jesus. And again, listen to him. They are simply endorsed again by the voice to follow Jesus. This is Jesus' call to discipleship. Listen to me. Listen to me. Peter's attempts to box the presence of God is dismissed. Jesus again teaches that the presence, presence of God in him is available for all who ever believe in him and follow him. And then Moses and Elijah's gone the mirage disappeared. On the mountain, Jesus with Peter, James, and John is there for all to present God's purpose and God's will. Jesus is Jesus there for them, and for you and for me and for many. This is God's will on him that I truly believe. We are now going through very challenging times or difficult times in life that we, no one never experienced. So this time, this, this period of time, I used to question my faith. I questioned to myself about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to follow him and what it means to be the church. So to be honest, I had more attention and values on the church as gathered people. This means a gathered people is the church when particularly in person at a designated place like worship space. One part of my brain worked so hard to prepare all our online worship resources and approaches of pastoral care in various ways. And at the same time, on part of my soul wondered whether our identity as the church is valid during a period of time not together in person. I was a bit doubtful. 
So for me, it's hard to get out of the foolishness and struggles for my own soul and our church health. But there was fortunately a critical moment to change my view and my belief in that regard. That experience of incident rescued me who wanted to box the presence of God in physical space or certain time like Peter's attempt. And following is my testimony. The last year, the Sunday, All Saints Sunday, the 1st of November, me and a number of our young families of our church were invited by Meredith, Heather McDowell's daughter, to meet with Heather, we believe who is now in heaven. It was a Sunday afternoon, cold, showered outside. So 15 plus Mary and Heather gathered in Heather's lounge. All became aware that her time was not too long with us. So on the Mary's request, Mary's request, we sang two songs, Come as you are, and may the feet of God together for her and for each other. It followed a prayer of blessing on her, and then Rosemary, her elder, spoke of words of assurance and blessings. It was a huge privilege for me or for us to be part of Heather's life and her very last moment as Christian friend and church minister. Also, she seemed to teach me in that gathering and even today that we who were in the lounge formed a church in person and those who are still a church in remembrance of who she was for us. That gathering underscores, underscores, sorry, underscores the importance of gathered people as the church and remembering Heather's life and her giftedness of caring people is also forming a church if I still live it, I still live it out this moment. I cannot box Heather's presence and her love. And I cannot institutionalize the presence of God, but only follow it until he comes again. So now I'm much relieved from the struggles, and now I I feel free ever before. So dear my brothers and sisters in Christ, the church is church there for us, he for us. So we are the church, no matter where we gather or what we practice today. What we want is Jesus Christ, who walks with us in this life journey, always willingly helps us and silently listen to us and listen to our prayers. Then Jesus is always Jesus for us, who let us do his Father's will in our life, though we are now in a period of time, in stress and challenges. So let us hold fast the words speaking of Jesus Christ, who is always at the same place. Our soul and our spirit, our mind and our body, and our gathering and our scattering. And let us welcome Jesus who may transform our lives today. In this year, 2021, we will need Jesus more and more. So let us follow him as we have done. Let us continue to follow him with all hearts and with all souls. I believe that we are today traveling okay with him in the presence of God that frees us and fills us. God is with us. God is in a particular place for for us to wait. He is in you, in me, and in us. God is always with us. 
Thanks be to God. Amen. Sorry. Good morning. And it's just so bright here. It's a bit hard to see people. But it's lovely to be together. And thank you very much, Sunjay, for your very thoughtful um, reflection. Um, it's very timely uh, that we talked about the church because a lot of some of the prayer today is all about the church, particularly um, in our uh, uh, international cycle of prayer, the, uh, the churches in Switzerland, Licht Liechtenstein and Austria are the ones that uh, have prepared um, some words for us and I've drawn on those and sort of put things together. The other thing I wanted to say, and Robin just mentioned this to me this morning, that we're going to have a few moments of silent prayer today for uh, our beloved former minister, Annette Hawken and Nigel. Um, Annette is not very well, as you know that she has um, been unwell and then she's got better and so forth or improved, but at the moment she's not very well. She's in hospital in Narandra. And um, so we do hold her and Nigel and their family in our prayers. And I'll include something in the prayers today. Thank you. So please join me in the prayers of the people. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that today we can again worship face to face. This means so much to us. Thank you for your safekeeping over all these months. And bless those who are unwell or frail and unable to come along to church. Help us to be sensitive and to see ways we can bring friends and neighbours much needed comfort and support. We pray for all those impacted by the pandemic, including families forcibly separated through travel restrictions and all those working so hard and often in desperate circumstances to test and care for the sick and those dying and to implement much anticipated vaccination programs. We pray that governments and those in positions of responsibility will make decisions based on evidence and compassion and that those in the highest office will take strong, effective and generous actions to address current and emerging issues and the well-being of their and our fellow citizens. We pray for our young people and their families as their young ones grow in faith and understanding and develop the wonderful talents you have given them. They are all so very precious. Help us to provide the support and encouragement they need as they start on new learning this year, higher levels of studies and fresh, exciting pathways. We thank you and pray for your continuing inspiration of our minister Sunjay and Grace and their family, dedicated ministers in our church family, Barnabas and Justin, our wonderful lay preachers, Robin and Kevin and Alan, and our loving congregation, many of whom exercise leadership in various ways. We pray also and with thanks for the thoughtful leadership of all those in our presbytery and at Synod. And now we take a few moments of, of, of prayer to think of our dear friend Annette and Nigel and their family. Annette has been a wonderful minister to us and to many, and she has been so amazingly courageous in spite of um, tremendous illness. We know that you have been with her all the time and that you love her and Nigel and their family so much. But just gather, let us all gather around her and your loving arms as well, just to keep her safe and buoyed up as she faces this particular time. We just have a few moments of silent prayer. We remember nearby our sister churches and today we pray for the continued presence and impact of Glades Hill Congregational Church and Carlos Korean Presbyterian Church. And in the world cycle of prayer, we pray for your churches in Austria, Liechtenstein and Switzerland, which we know also as the home of the World Council of Churches. 
We give thanks especially for the commitment of these countries and churches to provide for those in the world who are in so much need. We pray for the organisations located there that work for justice, reconciliation and peace and improved economic justice to benefit all. We pray for those reaching out to support migrants and working to counter attitudes and practices that are harmful to migrants, seeking only a peaceful and positive future for their families. And we think of your church and those in your church family. We pray for people of faith where it is extremely dangerous to follow you. North Korea, Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Pakistan, even in Ethiopia, to name a few. We pray earnestly for their safety and perseverance. We pray also for your wisdom and for the safety of local partners working on the ground in often risky situations, for Christian organisations like ones we are familiar with, Open Doors and Act for Peace and the Christmas Bowl in 2021. In closing, we draw in the meditation of Pastor Vincent Schmidt in Geneva and a prayer from Austrian churches who were marking the 50th anniversary of the signing of the International Treaty at the end of the Second World War. Please join me. Dear Father God, help us to remember that you are the creative origin of all that is, the source of our resources. In the midst of contradictions, conflicts and absurdity, your son, offers us the light of reconciliation with ourselves, with others, and with God. Guide us through the immense complexity of this world. Help us to remember that you are the foundation of all that endures, and you are beyond all that is transitory. As we leave this place today, may no blindness destroy the work of your hands. May no hardness of heart Close our doors in the face of people in need. May no discouragement hold us back from responsibly shaping the future. May no fears or prejudices separate us from those near and far. And may your name be hallowed. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. So now we are saying the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
before the benediction, so I'll say thank you all for your coming, your joining in the presence of God among us, and bringing your hope for tomorrow and to everybody here. And also you may go well into your day and your, your week with the fullness of God's love and care. We continue to be the church wherever we are, and also we are the church who is committed to serve our world, our neighbor, and our friends and family. This is the benediction. Let us be like water, which is always water, though it is placed hundred different containers, unless we have clean and pure heart, sustaining many lives. Let us be like Jesus, who is always Jesus for many, no matter what life they might live, unless we are faithful and vision-filled, bringing hope to many lives. Dear my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us go together as the people of God to show the power of the love of God, to form and transform the company of Jesus Christ, and to be to be who we are in the image of God, the Creator. Amen.